Thank you very much, Doug. Uh, good afternoon. It's great to be back and represent Purdue University. Uh, I'm excited to be here. It's uh, a great time for everyone. Uh, the football season is approaching, and uh, I know our team is excited to get things underway. Uh, for us, last year was a success. I believe that uh, you know we found a way to gain confidence as a team uh, and believe that we could actually win and compete against very good opponents. And while we had our struggles in the middle of the season, without question, we finished with a bang. At one point, we were four and six and uh, looking at where do we go next. And our team found a way to win the last three games uh, and win the bowl game in dramatic fashion. And it was a, a great ending to our season. But it was a testament to our players and coaches uh, who put in a lot of hard work, uh, continued to uh, believe that we could turn the corner. And uh, without question, we have momentum coming into this season. We were happy with uh, the, the fan turnout. And... Uh, our Purdue faithful definitely represented us uh, and came out full force and uh, was a big difference in a lot of our games, and we're looking forward to everyone coming out again and support the team. Uh, this year is a challenging schedule. Uh, opening up with Northwestern at home is a great opportunity for our football team to play a team of that caliber, a team that beat us pretty good last year and uh, is well coached, uh, outstanding uh, players that play the game the way it's supposed to be played, and it'll be a great challenge. But I do like playing a tough opponent the first game. I think last year uh, we played a Louisville opponent that was heavily a favorite against us. We found a way to keep it close, coming in at halftime with the lead. And even though we didn't win, we gained a lot from that loss. And it helped us uh, for the next couple of weeks for sure. So uh, first game's important. We have a four-game homestand to start the season. Uh, but our guys have worked hard. And I know the expectations are higher, but our players are looking forward to it. And they've worked hard. Our, our players and our coaches understand that for us, we've got to be ready game one. It's important to, to start the season the way, the way we finished. And uh, sometimes that's hard to do, but there's got to be great focus. There's got to be uh, great leadership uh, amongst our team in order to get that done. I know today we're represented, uh, represented by three of our uh, great players on our football team on defense. Marcus Bailey, a great leader for us. Uh, on offense, uh, David Blau and Elijah Sindelar, two great competitors that are competing for that top spot, but really uh, improved as the year has went on, uh, went on, and they did a great job helping us win football games. Uh, the makeup of our team, I, you know, we did lose some key guys on the defensive side of the ball, but we have four um, starters coming back. Uh, Marcus Bailey, Lorenzo Neal uh, on the D-line, uh, Jacob Thieneman in the secondary, Navon Mosley in the safety position as well, and I think those four guys will be a steady anchor to the defensive side. And we have some good young talent that you may not know the names, but I, I do think we have more depth, uh, and they just got to gain experience. On the offensive side of the ball, we have more Starters coming back, but at the same time, we need to get a lot better. And uh, I do feel good about the progress we made, but we've got to find some playmakers, uh, some guys that can stretch the field and find ways to make big plays, and hopefully we can get that done. Special teams were solid with their long snapper and kicker and punter coming back, and uh, I feel good. This is an exciting time for us to be up here. Uh, Purdue football uh, is excited to be in the mix, and uh, we're excited to, that uh, the expectations are have risen, but I think our players will respond, and uh, every game uh, is going to be important to us, but we're looking forward to game one. I'll open up to questions. Coach, we'll take our fir first questions on our left here in the middle. Hey, Coach, uh, Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald right here. What's one or two things maybe you know about the Big Ten going into this year that as a first-year coach last year you just didn't know and, and learned over the course of the season about the league and the way teams play in the league? Well, I tried to do a good job last year of studying our team when I got the job and then studying all the opponents. So I think I had a pretty good read on it, and I think it, for the most part, came true. Without question, uh, the Big Ten is known for very physical, uh, tough uh, players on each team, but very good on defense, very solid defenses. And I think the best teams are not only good on defense, but they found, find a way to create some plays on offense. Uh, so for us, uh, we made improvements on the defense side of the ball, uh, but we needed to find ways to make more big plays. And I think for us, it's about getting more speed uh, by finding ways to get them the ball. Uh, but there's about four or five elite teams in this league every year that are going to be right at the top. And it's up to us at Purdue and other schools to try to inch up that uh, gap, shorten the gap a little bit, and uh, hopefully we can get that done. I know last year we were competitive in games. Hopefully this year we can find a way to f 
win a few a few big games, but our home schedule is going to be difficult for us, which uh, is good it's at home, but we have some good opponents uh, with Northwestern and Boston College, Missouri, Ohio State, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, and we've got our hands full. Coach, our next two questions will be on this side of the room on the right. We'll start here down front. Hey, Coach, Ryan McNeil, obviously unfiltered. First four games are at home, but like you mentioned, a really tough schedule. How do you balance starting strong with the, the chance that there could be a four and six start and that kind of thing repeating from last year? Well, for us, I think we're in a little bit different uh, boat as some of the other teams. Uh, you know, we actually have 11 Power 5 teams on our schedule, and we uh, – enjoy that aspect of it. I think we need that. It's important for us to play great competition. And while we may not win as many as we uh, would like, uh, it will help our team get better. So we're excited about the schedule we have. We know each and every week it's going to be a, a tough opponent. It's going to be a challenge. But, you know, we've got Northwestern at home, which is going to be uh, a great challenge for us, a team that beat us, like I said, very handily the first game, or excuse me, last year, and then Eastern Michigan. But then our non-conference of uh, Missouri and Boston College, that'll be a test, uh, both bowl teams, uh, and then into conference play. So for us, it's about getting better and uh, hopefully finding a way to get over that six win threshold and see if we can build on that. But uh, we're encouraged by the, the schedule we have, and I know our fans will come out and enjoy watching those games. Coach, our next question will be here in the middle of the room toward the back right there. Bill Bender, Sporting News. Uh, Coach, it's pretty unique to bring two quarterbacks. In fact, I can't remember that happening in this event. But uh, could you just talk about the strengths of both in their second year with you in the program? Well, I really feel that... Uh, while it is uh, uncommon to bring two quarterbacks, I felt it was the right thing to do. I think both guys are great ambassadors for our university. They've done a tremendous job to work extremely hard to get better. Uh, and quite honestly, they helped us win football games towards the end of the year. And uh, David Blau, unfortunately, came down with a severe injury that uh, required surgery. Elijah Sindelar, fortunately, again, when he came in, he had played in some meaningful games and meaningful minutes. And uh, played lights out the last four games, especially uh, the last three and a half with a torn ACL, but really played outstanding football. So both guys, I believe, were playing their best football at the end of the year. Uh, David is very cerebral. He's an accurate passer. He's played a lot of football games. Uh, he wants to win. He's a great teammate. I think all of our players respect him and know that if he's on the field, we have a chance to win. And Elijah, it's a little bit different. He's uh, got a big arm. He can throw the ball vertically. He can fit it in tight windows. He's not bashful to do that. Uh, and he had great numbers the last four games and, and, and helped us win. So both young men uh, to handle this position of two quarterbacks, uh, I couldn't ask for two better people to do it with. So it's made that aspect of it uh, much easier. They both uh, bring it every day. They compete. I do think the competition brings out the best of both of them. I do think the competition that they have lets our other positions know that that's what we're looking for, and uh, they need to raise their level of play. But I couldn't ask for two better people. Uh, they do things the right way off the field, uh, and I know that uh, while it is a problem, it's a good problem to have. Coach, we'll go all the way to our left here for the next question. Uh, hi, Jeff. Mike Carmen, Lafayette Journal and Courier. Last year you had to get your team to believe it could compete, it could win at the highest level. Is there a baseline now where you've cleared that hurdle? And have you seen that confidence throughout the summer and the off season where you can get past that and move forward on other things? It was important to get our guys to uh, find a way to have confidence and believe. And last year was a process uh, throughout spring practice, summer practice, fall camp. While we made some strides, really in scrimmage situations, it didn't quite uh, carry over as much as I would like. So it wasn't really until halftime of the first game against Lola where we came in with a lead. Uh, if you came into our locker room, you'd have thought we won a Super Bowl. Our guys were happy. Uh, you could see that uh, uh, belief that, you know what, maybe we are a little better than we thought. Maybe we can compete against these teams. And while we didn't finish the game, it was something we built on. So now that uh, we've been able to go through a little struggles in the middle of the year and find a way to win, our guys are feeling more confident that uh, if they do all the small things right, if they work hard, if they play together, that we can compete and we can win. Uh, so... Our margin for error is not big, so we, we understand that. We get it. So that's why coaching and uh, has to be great. Our players have to uh, 
you know, not beat themselves. Uh, but I do think our guys are looking forward to this season. I think that they believe that uh, we have improved. I think they uh, firmly believe we've made strides. And I know that um, they're encouraged by the progress that we made. And I, and I think they've worked extremely hard to this point. So I, I'm excited to, to watch them play and see it unfold. But uh, hats off to our players because to see a lot of our seniors experience success last year, and to see the gratitude they had and how much it meant to them, it was a, a rewarding season that we all got to build on. Time for one final question. Coach, we'll stay in the same spot in the room on the left. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Mike DeFabo, CNHI. Follow up on another question about the quarterbacks. Last year, it seemed when both were healthy, you kind of settled into a rotation where one played the first quarter, the other guy played the second. Do you expect a similar kind of rotation, or do you hope to settle that battle maybe in training camp or throughout the season? We're going to let the quarterback position on the battle play out. Uh, it's hard to say at this point. Without question, I'm not opposed to playing two guys. If we feel like it's a close competition and they both can bring value to the team, if one guy emerges, I'm fine with that okay. Um, you know, I, I do think both young men have improved. I do feel confident that if we have the right pieces around them, those two quarterbacks are good enough to win with as long as they're doing the small things correctly. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I feel good that whoever's in there will have a chance to, to win. So we'll let this thing play out, hopefully about a week and a half before the first game when you really start to concentrate on your first, first opponent. Uh, we'll maybe have a starter uh, ready to go and the other guy on deck ready to step in when we need him. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks, guys.